Hi LemFem, I just wanted to warn you about the content of this video. This video is more serious than the videos I usually upload. Among other things, I will be talked about binge eating disorder, addiction and depression. If at this moment you're not feeling okay, I advise you to not watch this video. I'll see you in my next one. Yugi. No, no, no. You aren't fooled. Da, 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 da. I do know that. Hello, MFM. So it's September 1st, and I wanted to talk to you about health losing weight, I don't know. <laughs> I just had some things that I wrote down on a piece of, well, not a piece of paper. I wrote down on my phone and then I wrote it down on my iPad because I'm filming through my phone. Yeah, doesn't matter. So what I wanted to talk about is my personal experience with eating disorder. For me, like this is my truth. It doesn't have to be your truth, but this is how I think about the matter through trial and error and just experience like firsthand life experience. And I wanted to talk about it. As kids, a lot of us experience a certain kind of trauma. And this trauma can be life-changing, life-altering. Especially when you're dealing with ongoing trauma that goes on for years upon years. It's very common for people to develop certain kinds of coping mechanisms. One of those coping mechanisms is an eating disorder. There are multiple types of eating disorders. Binge eating disorder is one of them. So as children, we like our behavior isn't as calculated as we are as we're older. Like it's not that you start eating with the thought of like, hey, this helps me, so I'm going to continue eating or whatever other coping style you use. I mean, kids can get very angry, can act out on school or have fights with other people. As they get older, they can use certain substances. I myself grew up in a home where I saw people having addictions, people having eating disorders. I know about different types of coping mechanisms that people can use to just handle their trauma or deal with it. So as you grow older, this mechanism, this coping mechanism that you learned, it gets into a habit. Like your neuron circuits, circuits, the neuron circuits in your brain, they get used to like, okay, I feel bad and I eat and it causes like a certain reaction. And so the bond between those neurons gets strengthened. Your coping mechanisms, it it's, gets into your system. It really gets into your habitual manner of dealing with things. So first you use this coping mechanism to cope with stress and trauma that you experience at home and then you are going to cause it because other things happen that upset you. You just turn to that coping mechanism. And as you grow older, I saw that for myself once I was able to live on my own. I was 19 at the time. I officially still lived at my parents' house, but I um, got into a relationship with Stefan, who you may also know because sometimes I talk about him here. We're still good friends. I just had to get out of the house and then I came into this world and my coping mechanism it still worked of course but it, I, I noticed that it was working in an opposite direction because I got bigger I got more insecure I had trouble with just a lot of things and I noticed like okay so I have this coping mechanism because like I developed it when I was very young because I needed it at that time but now that I'm older it works in an opposite direction. It is causing trouble. It's working against everything that I'm trying to accomplish. And this might be a little bit harsh, but it's literally killing me. It's a, it's a coping mechanism that in that time it helped, but right now it doesn't work anymore and it is killing me. And it's something that you really have to grasp, like really have to grasp, before being able to move on from that. After grasping like, okay, so this is what it is and I had this coping mechanism and I'm grateful for it because it really helped me when I was younger, but right now it doesn't help me anymore. So I have to get rid of it. I have to say goodbye to it. I just thought that I was a fat piece of bleep and that I just had to grow some willpower and I did lose big chunks of weight before but I was never able to keep it off and I don't know like I'm losing weight right now but I cannot predict the future I won't predict the future nope not going to do that anymore because I feel as if like okay I'm never going back to binging again but you can say that it's a coping mechanism and it's so stuck in every fiber of your body of your system maybe there are even people that have binged and then they don't binge for like years on end 
and then something very traumatic happens like they get into an accident or they deliver a baby and it is very stressful or traumatic and they turn back to food like i've seen that before and that can happen so it's just like addiction it's something that is there and will always be there so that's something to really be cautious about I have to turn on my iPad again <laughs> because it turned off because I am rumbling so much. So after <laughs> so after you grasp the situation and you really am aware of like okay so this is what's happening and I need to get rid of that coping mechanism that was working before but isn't working for me any longer. The second stage in that from what I personally experienced is grieving. I really had to grieve a lot of things. I had to grieve like I ruined a part of my body. I will never be that 16 year old with like in my head at the time the perfect body and I'm not able to just be like this perfect queen in a prom dress or whatever. Like, you know, those are dreams that I had when I was 16 or 17. I ended up never going to prom because I was... Nope. No, school. School really ruined me. That's that's no kidding, by the way. School was really traumatic. Um, also, next to a bunch of other issues that were going on at the time. I think it took a couple of years where I was like, okay, I, I do accept it. Like, if I lose weight i will have loose skin i will never return to that age where i just can i don't know go and take a hike or just run to not miss my train or my bus or whatever i will not experience that again and that really is something really sad if you think about it that you will never have that a lot of people don't have it but also a lot of people do have that experience so it takes some grieving to get over that and i i consider this to be quite an an Artificial? No, artificial is kunstmatig. For myself, this topic of like, I will never be able to have that perfect body. Blah, blah, it's not too serious of a thing, but it is an example. Something that is more serious though, is grieving about my childhood, about my school experiences. You are only a child once and you are not able to do those things over so that also took a lot of grievance and i think i'm still in that process i still have to grieve a lot of things and i'm no near where i want to be because i i have a lot of grieving to do but it all ties into saying goodbye to that coping mechanism because it started in a place where you needed it when you was a little kid or a child and you have to revisit that chapter and take yourself by the hand and really guide yourself and that takes a lot of i don't know it's it's hard to do because i myself i do not have a lot of memories about my childhood like specific memories i do know like this happened and that happened like globally but i do know how that little kid somewhere inside of myself is feeling and every time that i revisit that part it's um it's quite hard but that's something that i am doing in therapy you have to say goodbye to your own life the life that you would have wanted for yourself so grieving is like the next stage oh my ipad turned off again come on fingerprint thingy work please so after grieving the situation or at least just accepting like okay i have to grieve there are a lot of things that i will never experience and that i would have loved to experience and i will never get there you have to grieve and after this grief you have to take responsibility and it's sad it can be very unfair most of the time especially when you're dealing with child trauma it will feel very unfair because your childhood has been influenced by some things that you did not choose you did not choose to get born you did not choose to go through the things that you did as a kid and still you're now an adult and you are the one that is responsible for your own life and that's also something i guess you have to grieve but after grieving there's only one thing that you can do and that's take responsibility as sad as it is no one is going to deal with your problems except for yourself and if you really zoom out, like if you zoom out like on the world, and this might sound very hard, it's something that I'm quite used to, I can be quite hard on myself, but if you zoom out, like this world doesn't give a shit about you as an individual. Like it's no one else's responsibility to fix you, the world does not owe you anything. And that's, that's a harsh lesson, but I think it's something that you truly have to accept. Also, I, I wanted to talk about this for a very, very long time, but this is also where depression gets in. Because the number one thing we as humans want, like the same as animals really, we want to live. We do not want to die. Like our main focus is to stay alive. And of course, we also have to eat, we have to poop and stuff like that. But our number one priority is staying alive. Duh, duh, duh. 
the stay in a life stay in a life you have to admit that that was a song in your head right but yeah staying alive and as people when we get depressed that core drive of i want to stay alive i do not want to die it, it starts to crumble that thought of like i have to live and the motivation that comes out of that drive to better yourself to get healthy and stuff like that that can play into that eating disorder like it eats up every piece of motivation that was left to get yourself healthy and stuff like that i myself like when i am depressed it's very hard to stick to the motivation of trying to better yourself trying to to do good things for yourself because what's the point in it the point is that you have like a happy life and that you probably like if i lose weight i will live longer well hello depression in that moment i do not give a about how many years i have to live because i don't care about living that much anymore at that moment i will definitely put a trigger warning before this video um i don't know that's just how i feel about it and that's something that's really sad depression is just it's not an easy thing and um it's it's just it's not okay so the last thing that i wanted to talk about people with binging disorder have like an over obsession with food I saw that with myself. I have had binges since I am very small, like I can remember myself binging at a very early age and I think it really became disordered when I got older and when I got like to puberty, 13, 14 I think, because I was in an environment where I was able to just go to the store myself and buy things myself and that continued from there into like a real disorder. Throughout my own years, I have had periods where I would describe my behavior really as food addiction, where I would get really, really angry when I wouldn't be able to have my sugar and my stuff. I even would get manipulative towards my sister and to stay fun. I actually want to do a video where I interview them about this subject because I have never forgiven myself for that behavior and they did forgive me for it, but it's something that I cannot forgive about myself and I really am bothered by that still but i have had periods where i would consider my behavior to be that of a food addict but even in the periods around that where i didn't or do not consider myself a food addict i still get very obsessed about food like constantly thinking what will be my next meal what am i going to eat for breakfast tomorrow when i wake up i haven't eaten this in a long time maybe i should make it oh my god there is a sale for ben and jerry's and i have to buy it and stuff like that you're constantly over obsessing about food and that is a really big struggle losing weight on the other hand can also be very obsessive and that's something that i noticed for myself it's not good to have yourself being over obsessive about food but on the other hand it's also not healthy behavior to be over obsessive with food in terms of like losing weight so counting every calorie weighing in every day weighing in multiple times per day and that's also behavior that you see with a lot of people that have binge eating disorder or any other eating disorder that over obsessive need of control control with food, binging or restricting, whatever way, it's both obsessive behavior. Something that I really like to have as a mantra is like, I do not live to eat, I eat to live. And that's what helped me last time to lose weight. And that's also what I'm trying to do now. So at the moment, I do try to better my health and I do try to better my diet. I do try to better my routine. But at the same time, I'm taking very, very, very small steps. I used to be all or nothing behavior, so I would eat everything or I would eat as little as possible and get on my bike for four hours a day and walk for hours a day and that's very extreme. But even if you do not take it that extreme, if you in one day change up your food plan, your routine, your plan about working out, if you change everything from one day to another, it's such a drastic change that you have to be over obsessed about it to keep it under control, to, to be able to stick to it. All or nothing behavior has to go like keep this rule of 80 20 that's something that really helps me too i learned that from my i think my ed specialists or my nutritionist i don't know one of them but they said like keep to this 80 20 percent like if you mess up 20 percent but you do good 80 percent of the time that's a big big win oh my god my cats killed my camera <laughs> it's okay again Pistache did that they want some food because it's 5 30 pm 
that's something that really helped me to try to stick less to that all or nothing behavior because it doesn't help it makes you over obsessive about food be it the restrictive side or be it the binging side doesn't matter you're still over obsessed with food it doesn't really help and i think that's everything that i wanted to talk about at least that's everything that i wrote down yeah my next video like it's september so i have some new goals that i started doing since today so far so good i will talk to you about them in my next video i think i'm also busy like in the process of filming uh, a video of struggles that I'm having at this weight because as you know I gained a lot of weight the past year and um, yeah I noticed that there are a lot of things that I struggle with like way more than I used to a year ago so keep an eye out for those videos and thank you for watching again I think I already said that I will see you in my next one and um, have a nice day lemons you're the night sky trying to make me see your stars